Yo, yo, you're staring at the city. It's Nathan. I got a very special guest with me here today. Go ahead and tell him your name and what you represent. Hey, it's your boy Curfew, and I represent No Excuses Worldwide. And I'm out here from LA all the way in Minneapolis. Oh, St. Paul. Twin Cities, right? Yeah, yeah, Twin Cities. So. Yeah, hell yeah. Um, and you're on tour right now. Yeah, yeah, I'm on a Midwest tour. You know, a little short tour, but you know, uh, going all around from uh, Superior, Wisconsin to out here in the Twin Cities. Mm -hmm. And you told me that you're a producer and an artist? Artist and show promoter. And promoter. Mm -hmm. Fire. You know, you got to do it all, man, in yeah. this game. At least that's how I feel. I agree. All right, so you had told me that you are working on your next album called Came a Long Way. Yeah, yeah it's uh, Came, a long way, Came a Long Way. It's the follow-up to uh, my first like official full album uh, that I dropped last year called Through My Eyes. And um, that one, uh, you know, it was like, you know, a concept album that I really put together you know, from, from beginning to end, like, cause everything before was just like a bunch of tracks throughout the years and then I would put it together. But, but this time it was like, I actually sat down and really like focus on oh, what's the next track after this, put it together and make sure that everything just goes well, you know, like a real album. Cause I've, I've never been, was able to do that before. And then uh, now I got addicted to it. So now I gotta do a follow up and do it again. And I think uh, I, f I found my formula that, that works w well for me to be able, to, in my opinion, to get to the next level because once I did that, my music just just uh, took off more than ever before. So yeah, you know, you gotta find what works for you. So you said you've, you've planned it out, like you took steps, you know, like really yeah. thought it through. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit more about that, um, that process. The, the process would be like I sat there and so like through my eyes was I was definitely telling you like my story kind of in like a, like a short paragraph I feel like put it all in one right and then now I feel like I could tell my journey from beginning to end in a more slower pace so like this album is probably gonna um, you know because it's called came a long way I'm gonna be telling my story uh, from basically like the beginning like the, the trials and tribulations right and then the next album after that kind of like a series would be more of like the you know what i'm going through right now from my past experiences yeah. and then the album after that is kind of what i expect of the future mm. you know and it will be the future so is what i'm going through at that at that time so uh, um you know it's kind of like a like a series that i'm going through and so i'm assuming that you've produced you produced it um i would say i'm probably going to produce probably 40 to 50% of it. Nice. I also have other friends that are producers that are working on the album with me, or if I go to another studio and they have a, and they have a beat, they're inspired and, and then the, it ends up being on the album because that happens a lot, mm -hmm. then, that, then that as well. So it's about 50% of my production, probably about 30% of people that I already work with that they make beats cater to, to me. And then 20% of just random, like it just happened in the spur of the moment. We're in the studio vibing out and it yep. just it just happened. Yep, yep. That sounds very organic. Mm hmm. Is there anything else you want to say about that album? Uh, well, it came a long way. I'm very excited about it. Um, and uh, I hope to drop it um, by the end of summer or the beginning of fall. And then definitely going to start, uh, you know, putting together a tour for that and come back to the Midwest as well. Nice. Stop by. Mm, definitely. Yep. Make sure you check out Curfew. Came a long way. Coming uh, very soon in the next couple months. Hey. Like. Yeah. And the two are coming back to Minnesota. So make sure you check that out as well. All right. Curfew. You said you're throwing a show in Texas on July 2nd. Yeah. yeah July. Tell me about that. Like the process of throwing the show, like the show itself. Like. So it started out because... Cause my uh, my boy hit me up that he's doing a show in Phoenix June thirtieth, right? Okay. And I already I do a lot of shows with him. I go out to uh, Arizona. Who, who is that? Um, his name is Radio Flow. Shout out Radio Flow. He's an artist slash promoter, and uh, I happened to be at his first show he ever threw two years ago. Nice. And that's how I met him. It was actually his first show, and then from there we built a you know we built a bond relationship, and he actually has he's actually like a part of my like my uh, my team as well. Like no excuses worldwide. There you go. You know? That's what I was wondering. So I'm glad you said. It. Yeah, yeah. Like he has his own thing, but he's also like. You know, I'm kind of like like having like what do they say like other chapters in different states. You're building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's you know that's how I figure uh, that's how kind of you, you feel the fan base and you feel you build a support 
people that want to rock with you and, and stuff like that, you know. Sure. To all the other artists, you know. Don't expect any handles. Like that. You got to work for it and build these relationships, even if it has to be, you know, state to state, slow grind. But, hey, the slow grind has worked for me. But, um, yeah, so he's going to throw a show June 30th. And um, so I was like, you know what? It's, it's, it's a good time ahead of time to get my whole team to, to make sure that they take time off of work and all that to come out there. So then um, uh, a couple of my like like fans supporters hit me up and they're like, bro, like why don't you? Are you doing all these shows out of state? Why don't you? Why don't you come to Texas again? Because we I had th uh, thrown a show my uh, my first out of state sh uh, show that I threw was a year and a half ago in San Antonio, Texas, and that was re that was very successful. It was like an intimate show, probably about forty people, but it was like mostly fans. Like you know what I mean? Like. Uh, a like lot of artists can relate to this. A lot of shows that we do out here are open mics or anything. I love them. I do all types of shows. I'm, I'm not downgrading them, but it's mostly you're rapping in front of other rappers. And in rap, you gotta admit, we're egotistical, we're narcissists. It's just, it is what it is. It's one of the only genres like that. So it's kind of hard sometimes to build a support system when everybody sees you as competition. Wow. So it's, it's like, it's, it's, it's a relief when you go somewhere and it's actual people like, like listening to you bar for bar, word for word, and they're just vibing with you and they really become fans and they come up to you like, bro, like you're dope. And then they, they follow you and then not just that, they they follow up with you like, oh, how you doing? When are you coming back? Blah, 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 blah. Those, that's real fans, that's real support. And that's how, that's how I'm getting to, that's how we're doing this show July 2nd. So, cause we have June 30th. So I was like, okay, let me just do a little tour. We're gonna drive to uh, Phoenix from LA. It's only a six hour drive. And then from there, we're gonna fly to Dallas, me and my whole, my whole team. And uh, so I ended up, uh, you know, putting a show together. Um, you know, I, I, we hit up a bunch of venues. We found the perfect venue. It's in Arlington, Texas, which is about 20 minutes away from Dallas. And, um, and then I, I pick and choose the artists from Texas that I want the locals to come uh, and, and rock out with us. And then just do a bunch of promo online, and then the people that that support me out there, um, I'm I'm gonna be uh, sending them like flyers and stuff to do like street team work, and do it the old school way as well, not just putting money on Instagram and stuff, because that is that's still needed. Remember, promotion is is, is they got people got to see it in threes, they got to see it on social media, they got to see it in person, and so and people, you got to talk about it. So that's how that's how uh, you know stuff gets stuck. Tell me about your visuals. Tell me about, I know you said you have like a team of people to help you create visuals. You're creating, you're gonna be working on something later today. Yeah. So, uh, and specifically tell me about Disrespectful and Underrated. So Disrespectful is the latest uh, video I put out. And that one's like a like a very Cali flavor, um, like booty shaking song, you know, <laughs> but it's very LA. Yeah, let's go. You know what I mean? It's very <laughs> LA. You you know you in L.A. when you listen to that song, you know, <laughs> you, when it, if you ever want to get disrespectful, when you got the strip club, you ain't being nice. I got to come out to L.A., huh? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know what I mean? It's perfect for the strip club. You got the strip club, you being disrespectful. Uh, you know what I mean? You know, true. with consent. Uh, <laughs> key. The key. key, the key. Keys to the game. You know what I mean? So that, that, that visual, you know, is, we shot that video in Sunset Beach. Mm. Um, at the Sunset Lounge, I was actually throwing a show and I just took advantage of all my boys already being there for the show. And if you've seen the video, it's the, the buildings, like it's, it's dope. Like the way they, they, uh, they, they painted the walls and stuff. So it was like just a great backdrop. And uh, my boy uh, Sanders shot the video and he's basically like my main video guy. Yeah. And I work with other video, uh, video guys as well, but he's like my main, like, you know, Shout out Sanders. Sanders, Sanders, Sanders Productions. He he's he's really dope. He actually shoots for a lot of uh, popping artists in LA, and he's also a go-to video guy for DJ Paul from Three Six Mafia. So yeah, look at that. So a lot of videos you've seen for in the last two three years from DJ Paul were shot by him. You'll see Sanders Productions. You know, so I've been blessed to uh, be able to be linked with him, and I've known him for years. And I remember when he only charged fifty dollars for video. So you see the come up, man. The come up is real. You gotta rock with your people, man. Cause rock with them. Real. Rock yeah. with them from the start, cause you you never know where somebody's gonna be, and you know he might give you that homie discount, but you gotta be you gotta be there when nobody believes in them, when everybody, you know what I'm saying? But people people act like you know they don't know, but they then get mad like why are they charging me this? Like, hey, cause 
You didn't believe. You don't remember? <laughs> you don't remember? <laughs> you didn't remember when you said, well, the way my bank account is set up, uh, you know? <laughs> You hit me with the, uh, uh sounds good. Sounds I'll, hit, I'll hit you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey. <laughs> I, I don't even sweat it nowadays. I'm just like, all right. Yep. Like, we all go through it as entrepreneurs. You know how it goes. And then they'll go and spend double that on something, you know, on somebody they don't even know. I don't know about you, but I golf. I'm a golfer. And to me, that's like hitting like a bogey. Like, what do you do? Like, you should have just gone from down the middle. You trying to do all this extra stuff. All this understand? extra, like, yeah. <laughs> Trying to look cool, you know what I mean? That's one thing that gets me about, I'm not gonna lie to you about artists, is like they're always trying to do, they're trying to look cool. I'm like, bro, I'm not trying to look cool, I am cool. I decide I decide what shifts the market, shift the you, know, you know, that shifts the vibe, everything. You know, everybody's trying to look cool for somebody. I'm like, who are you trying to impress, bro? We're entrepreneurs, like we can set the tone. You know what I mean? That's what I love about independence. Like, you set the tone. Yeah, and that's why I rock, rock with Scotty, too. You know what I'm saying? Bro, he doesn't compromise for nobody. Oh my God. Yeah. And that's and that's that's uh, very inspirational and motivational. He does what he wants to do, and he's not going to do if, if he thinks it's some, it's some sucker shit. But he's not doing it. You know what I mean? <laughs> so that's one thing I can tell you about Scotty. Like, everything he does is genuine. And that, that he's, he's, he's a dope person, right. man. And you got the Wisconsin on right now. Hey, you know, I got a rep. I, I, I grew up being a Packers fan. My dad's from Taylor, Wisconsin. So, you know what I mean? You Growing up and growing up in L.A., remember, the, the, the Raiders left us. I'm, I was born 90. So by the time I was watching football, the, we, didn't have, we didn't have a team. And uh, uh, the Rams were in St. Louis. So. Pack. Packers. It was, it was easy. Like, you know, I wasn't going to rep Raiders. They were in Oakland. They're not L.A. Raiders, you know? Have you shot any videos in Wisconsin? Um, I, have I? Actually, I haven't. Okay. So that's something I need to do. I've shot, I've shot uh, two videos in, uh, in uh, St. Paul. So this is going to be the third one today? Yeah. Fire. Yeah. Cool. So um, I, uh, you can check that out. Um, I Want a Ball was shot in downtown. With? Uh, with Cold Climate. Again, okay. And then uh, Down For Me Remix. It was some lake. I don't know. I forgot where, but it's somewhere in St. Paul. So, but I do need to, that's one thing I got to do is shoot a video in uh, Wisconsin. That would be dope. In Wisconsin. That's fire, man. And two, if you need more videographers, let me know. You know, hey. we rock so. I think you, you did some visuals back in the day for Scotty, right? Oh, yeah. And those were creative, with, like the ones where it was like the animation stuff. Yeah, man. I, I, I take the resources that I have and I trying to do the best that I can with it. You feel me? Hey, I'm a fan first, bro. That's what I'm saying. I've, I've known your music and all your work. Thank you, man. You know, before I even knew, you know, even met you. Thank you. Yeah, that's huge. Um, okay. Uh, anything else about disrespectful or underrated? Oh, so obviously... You haven't even we, told me... Yeah, we haven't even talked yeah, about... Yeah, yeah. So, me. like I said, disrespectful is like more like that Cali vibe, like going out you know, type of vibe. And then underrated is my MC side. You know, I think a lot of people who who are artists, who are rap or into hip hop, usually start out kind of like boom bap. Most, for the most part. Okay. You know, for the most part, people, you know, that's your, that's the stuff that you freestyle to. Especially if, sure, you're, sure, sure, especially sure. if you're coming from my era, you know what I'm saying? So uh, that's how I started out. So, so then- in 90? 90, yeah. Oh, 92, okay. Yeah, so yeah, we, that's era. Yeah. Come on, man, we had the best stuff. Cartoons, everything, but um, <laughs> but underrated, you know, it was it was like uh, my way of being like, okay, I'm doing a lot of these girl songs, singing songs, you know, some auto tune, and then I'm doing a lot of ratchet stuff or like hustle music. Let me let me go take it back to some boom bap uh, MC style, and then that's how underrated came about, and uh, it features uh, my homegirl, a uh, rogue lucky who's a beast. So like, if you like that fast rap, but uh, lyrical, you know what I mean? Like, and she's a white white girl, blonde girl, come on. <laughs> You're gonna be like, whoa. Like you look at her in the video and then once from? she comes, uh, she's actually from uh, the uh, Ridgecrest, California in the desert. From California. Okay. Yeah, so uh, uh, Kern County, I know Valley about two and a half hours from LA. Like she's from there. Like she's from California the desert. California's a big state. I, I forget that sometimes. Like, well, LA is big in general, so it's not like here where you can just hear. Then in ten minutes, you just did all of St. Paul, right? Um, out there, even without with, without traffic, it was still it, you could uh, it could take you an hour and a half, two hours to go through all LA. LA, if you did a straight line, 
And so it, it makes it even more true about what I was saying before about like how you, you don't need everybody and you almost you, you can't really get everybody because there's so many people just in your market. Exactly. Alone, right? Sometimes I look at the market out here, I'm like, even just in the small market, you don't need everybody. It, it must be exciting, like being in a, in a bigger market like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, what I love about LA, what I would say compared to other places I've been to, it's a very creative place and almost everybody there is a creative yeah. and then a lot of people most people are transplants so most people move there from other states where they couldn't be creative so anybody who's a creative and either ends up in la for some for at least a year or two in their life but most people can't make it because it's so it's like 75 to 5 percent of the people i say that come out can't make it past a, a year, a year to two years, because it's so the 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 price of living is so Cost crazy. Living. I was about to say that, yeah, you hit it right on the head. So, but it's we we're constantly getting new people. It's, it's just it's insane. So like you can you can you can hide out there because you never you really you're not gonna meet the same people twice. And who shot that one? Uh, underrated was uh, Sanders as well. Sanders, okay. We actually okay. shot that in Ridgecrest. So when you look at that, you'll see some of that desert vibe. Ridgecrest. Mm -hmm. Well, Ridgecrest, being it's in the middle of nowhere, but it has uh, almost like a 30,000 population because they have the, the biggest weapons base there. Goddamn. China Lake, yeah. That's where they tested the, the stealth plane. I have no idea what that is, but I'm going to have to do my research now. The, you, you never heard of the stealth plane? Nah. What? You said China Lake? That's what the base is called, yeah, China is Lake. I feel like I'm <laughs> so so China Lake is like an extension of Area 51. Okay. It, so it's they they border Area 51, but so it's basically like so, so there's a lot of secret stuff that happens there. A lot of people who who in that town that live there um, are, are working on projects that they don't even know what those projects are linked to because they they're not allowed to know. I'm picturing just like a, like a flat nothingness. Yeah, like flat nothing. nothingness desert. Yeah. And it's called China Lake and there's no water. Yeah. Not the place to live, huh? No, but there's- you there's... to shoot the video there because? Oh, my parents live there now. There you go, okay. okay. And then that's how I'm linked over there. And then um, I went, I graduated from high school there. Okay, okay. So we, so was... we moved there uh, when I was in 10th grade. And then that's I, something to you. and then uh, I moved back uh, a year. I was actually, a year after high school, I moved to Orlando and I went. Uh, I went to early engineering school. Mm-hmm. That's what's up. Okay, so when, when I when I watch that visual, I'm gonna just see like arid nothingness, open space, some cactus, some cactuses in there. No, we kept it in one location, so you're not gonna see no too much flat land in that one because we kept it. Well, it's two locations, but if you watch my video for Die Slow, uh -huh. then you'll get the whole desert vibe of Crutchcrest. And I mean, and that, and that one's also like a like a lyrical uh, parano uh, talking about my paranoia. So if you, if you ever listen to Die Slow, there's a visual for it. Do you have a visual? Uh, do you, how many visuals do you have? Like over hundred? No. Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, hey, like the way you're talking, like I don't know, you might. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I wish. Yeah. Uh, I probably got around fifteen in the last two, three years. That's fire. Put out about 15. Cool. Okay, cool. So we can do the deep dive now. Check out Curfew, check out the visuals. Um, yeah, so I got something for everybody. Like I said, from the club bangers to the MC stuff to the stuff for the ladies. Yeah. And then the, like that hustle, you know, go and get it type music. Absolutely. Uh, how do people find, find you? Uh, you can find me on all social media music platforms, Curfew with a Q, Q-U-R-F-E-W. And yeah, follow me. I talk back. I follow everybody back. I'm not a hater. Um, uh, definitely network with me if you're an artist, if you're trying to expand and get to L.A. I'm definitely the plug. to. Uh, I throw at least one or two shows a month in L.A. So, you know, uh, tell me that you came from the from this podcast episode and I'll definitely get you a free slot. Uh -huh. And um, yeah, hey, <laughs> so, you know, check out check out my music, check out my uh, my latest visual. Subscribe to me. I just finally, after 10 years, hit over 1000 subscribers yes. on YouTube, which out of all platforms is you can't finesse that, bro. Nope. Everybody finesses their followers. They fake it till they make it. I don't do all that. 
uh, you know, check my resume. I always talk about that, man. I'm, I'm, everything I'm doing is organic, and I'm watching the grind slowly, but it's real. You know what I mean? And uh, it's one of those things. I've been trying to get that thousand subscribers forever, so I feel good about it. You know, I really was really trying to get that thousand subscribers. I'm on the same grind. It's right? so hard to yeah. get a thousand subscribers, man. They don't. People don't really realize. You know, if you're doing it the right way, it's just so tough. But what I want you to do is. You know, help me get to 2,000. Come on, man. So, yeah, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Curfew with a Q, Q-U-R-F-E-W. You'll find all my visuals. And um, and um, right now, I'm actually filming uh, my first blog that I'm going to start putting up there. I'm going to try to have a blog at least once a month mm -hmm. of my whole journey of everything I'm doing with the music for a month and put it together in, like, a 10, 15-minute, you know, video vlog for YouTube. So that's the next thing I'm working on right now. That's some of my favorite content to watch, so I'm looking forward to checking out one of those. Um, I appreciate you coming on the show. Hey, I appreciate you, man. Yeah, man. Hey, shout out to Scotty for linking us, man. Yep, shout out to Scotty Benz, man. Really tap in. Chips Barbershop, man. Chips Barber School. What? Yeah, that part. Woo! Yes, sir. Hey, you staring at the city. Curfew. Appreciate you, man. Hey, man. Peace. We out here.